Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, welcome if you are new. This video is about Passover and um, I tried to highlight some of the, some parts from the scripture. Um, yeah, if I'm looking over here it's because I have the Bible on the laptop so um, yeah. If there's anything I miss or anything that I don't mention, just leave it in comments and please be nice. Thank you. If you like this video, big thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell, follow my socials, everything will be linked down below. And yeah, first before we get into it, I want to pray. So if you would, close your eyes, bow your head and just listen. Dear Lord, thank you God for today. Thank you for the opportunity to do this. Thank you for the internet. Thank you for today. Thank you for the person watching. So I want to pray to bless their family and their health. And please help them keep the virus and all sickness and all evil and all everything, destruction, everything away from them. Please ignite something, something in someone's heart so that they can, this person's heart, so that they can be saved and they can want to be saved and they'll let you in. Thank you God for everything. Thank you God for today. Thank you Father. Thank you, please use me and speak through me Lord. Please help everything to go okay Lord. Please speak through me and use me. Um, and please bless your families and, you, and save someone out there today. Do for your glory. Thank you Lord in Jesus name. Man. Okay, so yeah, so the overall story of the Passover is when um, the Lord gave the Jewish nation, um, the Jews, like instructions on because they knew the destroyer was going to come, and um, the blood was applied. The blood in this was the, was applied to each dwelling for the protection. So let's just get into it and then, um, yeah, and then I'll go through my notes. Anyway, so the month was to, was the first month of the first of, the, of our month of our calendar, our year. The whole community of Israel on the 10th day of that month, um, each man had to take a lamb or a goat or a sheep, one for each household. And if there wasn't, because there was so many people, if there wasn't enough animals, you'd have to take one for a spare one for your neighbour. You have to share it like and you would determine the amount of animals you'd need to sacrifice based on the amount of people in the house to eat it the animals chosen were to be one-year-old male sheep goat or lamb without any defects they were supposed to take care of them until the 14th day of the month and all the israel all the community had to sort of separate them, do it together at twilight they would take some of the blood from they take the blood from the sacrifice and put it on the two sides of the door, the two door sacrifice, and the top and a basin at the bottom so it would drip into it in the shape of a cross. And if you think about it, that was a it was like a shadow of what was to come from Jesus. The same night they had to take the animal that was sacrificed, roast the meat over the fire along with a bit of herbs and some bread made without yeast, so unleavened bread. They weren't allowed to eat the meat raw or boiled, they had to roast it over a fire. The hands, the legs and the internal organs. They weren't allowed to leave any of the meat until the morning and if there was something over they had to burn it. God, like, they even got, had instructions on how to eat it. They had to have their shirts tucked into their belts, had to have their sandals on and their staffs on. And they had to eat it with haste. That same night, he was, God said he would pass, he passed through Egypt and strike down that it was kill every firstborn, both people, the baby or child, an animal, and bring judgment on the little G's, the gods, little gods of Egypt. The blood that they put over the door frames and on the side wall, on the sides, would be um, a sign of the houses, of the houses where they were. And when he saw the blood, he would pass over them, so... That was and he would pass over. The destroyer would pass over. That's where it went. And then because of that they would be saved. They wouldn't die. And this is to be that pass the Passover is to be celebrated for a week, I think it's a week long. For all generations to come. And it's important that they would take a hyssop branch, they would apply the blood to the door frames with a hyssop branch and wave it inside of a cross. Inside of a cross. And the, at the top and in the basin at the bottom. So it would be in the shape of a cross. Sacrifice with Jesus. You sacrifice the lamb. So they would be saved and then they, they would pass over the house. Hence the word pass over the house. And it would not allow the destroyer to enter the house and and strike them down and kill them. Like They even got um, instructions on who could eat 
the meat. So, but foreigners, anyone who was visiting the house or like anyone who didn't live in the house wasn't allowed to eat it. The meat, if a foreigner was staying in the house, they'd have to be circumcised because the circumcision for males isn't a covenant with God. No uncircumcised male would be allowed to eat. And all the Israelis that did what the Lord had, Lord had commanded were safe. But all those who didn't do it and who didn't sacrifice the lamb in the ship across the hyssop branches lost the firstborn in the house, both animal and I think both animal. Yeah. See, God passed over the houses with the cross because it was a sign of that's where the Israelis were staying. And he, and he would save those households from death. These sacrifices were a shadow of what was to come of Jesus for his death on the cross, the ultimate sacrifice to set us free from our sins. Even though the previous sacrifices could never t take away the sins. But they still appreciated what that would do. That one sacrifice forever was the Lord Jesus on dying on the cross. That's what we put away as a believer. And thus, God provided salvation. God provided the basis for the free salvation. So now what we like what we need to do if you want to be saved if you don't want to go to hell if you when you meet the lord we, we are like we all will when we leave this world even on the final judgment if you make it to the final judgment you're going to meet god and you're going to be judged you're going to be judged based off a perfect sinless life who lived the perfect sinless life jesus god was here and we're here we god knew that we could never get up to heaven on our own we need to be perfect why do we need to be perfect because heaven is a perfect place. The fulfillment of God's plan was him sending Jesus so we could be safe through him. The, our faith in Jesus and his blood saves us, cleanses us. Their faith alone in the blood saved them. Our faith alone in Jesus can save us. If you want to know for certain that your sins have, are being forgiven, if you need to become a child of God, if you want to know for certain that, that you have a home in heaven when you leave this world, when you die, you need to become a child of God. And you say, well, how do I do that? How do I know that my sins are going to be forgiven? How do I know that I, when I meet the Lord, I when I meet God, I'm not going to be judged? Yes, and I'm, I, how, do I, how, how do I do that? You need to admit that you're a sinner. So firstly, do you think you're a good person? Have you ever lied? Have you ever stolen? Have you ever blasphemed, cursed, or sworn? Have you ever argued with your parents? That's just four of the ten commandments you broke. And if you haven't, you don't think you've ever lied. Have you ever said OMG by giving it to your respect? When you hit your, when you hit yourself off of something accidentally, what do you say? Ah, <clears throat> what do you say? This is a dirty word that comes out of your mouth. It's a swear, because the Bible says you shall not call the Lord's name in vain. So that means you've broken. The Bible says you've broken one of God's laws. You've broken them all. So that means that you're guilty, right? So you innocent or guilty? You're guilty. Heaven or hell? Hell. So what is? How do you escape? How do you get? To heaven how like how you need to come to you need to come to jesus you need to come with you need to humble your heart and come to jesus with faith so you may know the gospel what did god do for guilty sinners like you and i so he wouldn't have to go to hell he sent jesus he had knew he, he jesus god sent jesus because so we could come to jesus and get him because we can never get up on our own god sent Jesus because he knew that we, we needed an ultimate sacrifice for to get forgiveness of sins. The Bible says without the shedding of blood there's no forgiveness of sins. What's shedding of blood? Jesus. Jesus came and he shed his blood on the cross for us. So what do you have to do? You need to come to Jesus. You may know John 3 16 as I've told you. For God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal everlasting life. Perish where? Hell. You need to come to Jesus. You may know that, but you may not know this. The Ten Commandments is called the modern law. You and I broke that law when we sinned. And Jesus paid the price. Why would you need to pay a price? Why do you need to pay a price? Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But that law was satisfied by what Jesus did on the cross. Jesus died on the cross and he was buried and he rose again on the third day. That's why he called out, it is finished. Just before he gave up his spirit. Think about it this way, right? You're in a courtroom. And the judge is the judgment God is just about to, and you're guilty of sin, whether it's speeding fines or whatever. You're just about to be cast and thrown into hell, into prison. But at the very last minute, the very last hour, the very last second, a man comes in and says, Stop everything. I will go to death for that person. I will take the punishment for that person. That's exactly what Jesus did on the cross. He died for you. He paid the wage. He went to death for 
you. Jesus came to save the world, not to condemn it. Now you can walk out, you know, you can walk out free, you know, and you have the, the gift of salvation because you've accepted Jesus. But you need to accept Jesus first. And I'll show you how to do that. I'll tell you how to do that anyway. Because your way your your um death has been your debts has been paid, God can legally dismiss your case. He can you can walk out of that courtroom free. He can legally dismiss your case because because Jesus has paid your fine. He can let you live forever. He can forgive your sins, dismiss your case legally and let you go. He can allow you to have everlasting life with him forever because the law was satisfied through the cross, through Jesus' death and resurrection. If you had just say, said, if you said to a judge, oh, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. They're like, yeah, you should be sorry. Sorry, well, so saying sorry alone won't save you. You need to repent. As I said, the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. There's no... There's no forgiveness like. Think of it, think of it this way. A skydiver, okay? A skydiver doesn't just look at a as a parachute and hope it'll save them. Because if that parachute is anyway defective, if it's not going to work, then that skydiver is going to jump out of that plane, fall 180,000 miles an hour, splat on the ground and die. But if that parachute is effective, then they're going to jump and fall 8 miles an hour. Land on their feet and walk and be fine. They're alive. They're grand. That's what Jesus did. That's, Jesus is a parachute. He is what saves us in this life. See, the skydiver has to put their life. They have to give their life, their, their, their hope, their trust, everything, their faith. Everything goes into that parachute. Parachute, hope that the parachute saves them. That's what Jesus Jesus saves us. That's why we need to put our faith, our trust, our hope, everything. We need to give Jesus our lives, our hearts in order to be saved. In order to know that we're going to heaven. If you want to know that when you meet God, you're going to be forgiven. For you, and you can walk into heaven with Jesus and be saved for eternity. Then you need to repent. Because being sorry isn't enough. You need to, you need to do A, B, C simple. You need to admit that you're a sinner. You've just told me that you're a lying, thieving, blasphemer and all the other sins that you've committed. You lied. Have you stolen? Have you blasphemed? Have you cursed? Have you argued with your parents? That's all. Have you um, gossiped? Have you been jealous? That's all sin. Ten commandments, like, it's all sin. So you yeah, admit that you're a sinner. Yeah, the Bible says, um, there are none are righteous, not even one. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. You're a sinner. It's good that you admit that. Now you need to believe Believe in your heart. Believe in your heart that God rose Jesus from the dead and confessed his mouth. You confess in your mind, confess his mouth that Jesus is Lord and you'll be saved. Romans 10 verse 9 through 10 said, If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God rose Jesus from the dead, you'll be saved. <coughs> For it is with your heart that you believe in are justified and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. So, you need to believe in Jesus' death and resurrection. Believe in your heart that Jesus died for you. Believe in your, become this in your mind that Jesus is Lord. He defeated the grave in his Lord. He defeated the grave and the death in his Lord. And what was I going to see? You need to be, you need to be convinced that he's, and confess that he's your personal Lord and Saviour. You need to humble your heart and come to Jesus. Come to the cross. Because that's what Jesus is for. To save you. Going to church can't save you. Going to mass can't save you. Going to, I'm not bashing church. It can help. Not gonna save you, like only Jesus can save you. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except to be through me. You have to go to Jesus in order to be saved. You learn about him at church and the Bible. You need to understand this is nothing that you can do to be saved. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 9 says that it's by, by grace we're saved through our faith. Um, not by any works as any man should boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had ordained before so we should walk before them. You need to trust Jesus at the parachute. And if you want that, if you want to know that you're going to heaven, if you want to know that when you meet Jesus, you're, you're not that he's going to work and he's going to say, he's not going to say, depart from me, I never knew. But he's going to, he is going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Then what you need to do is believe in your heart and confess with your, being confident with your mind. From your heart to God, just lean forward to his eyes and repeat after me. Dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner, but I believe that you died for me and I believe that you rose again. I hail you as Lord. I repent of my sins. 
I trust you, Jesus. I ask you, Lord, to save me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've just done that, you've made the best and most important decision you will ever make, ever in this life. You've given up Jesus, and now you're going to meet Jesus. When you meet him on that final day, you're going to meet him as your personal Lord and Saviour. Now you need to get busy in God's word. Get busy in the Bible. Share the gospel any way you can. Yeah, because every day is a day closer to Jesus, Jesus coming back. And you need to be saved before then. The book of Matthew says, I think it's chapter 7 says, um, not everyone who calls out Lord, but only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter the kingdom. That means you need to share the gospel. Okay? Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If there's any part of this that was wrong or anything, let me know in the comments. It would be nice. And if you like this video, thumbs up, hit the bell, do all the things, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.